Hello, thank you for joining us today. Entrepreneurs in Christ consists of a tribe of marketplace ministers doing business with godly values and with an emphasis on marketplace ministry. We are confident you did not stumble upon this page by chance, but we believe God divinely orchestrated this moment and you were handpicked to hear this message. We implore you to sit back and feed your spirit with the undiluted word of God, which is able to build you up as an effective kingdom entrepreneur and marketplace minister. We ask that you subscribe to this page as we release fresh content that will confirm your faith and convictions to maintain a righteous stand with God on a weekly basis. Also, please do like this video, click on the like button, share with a friend, share with a family member and leave a comment or question below where necessary. Thank you and God bless you. Bye. Amen. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Psalm 103 says, Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not his benefits, who forgives us all our sins and heals our diseases, who redeems your, our life from the pits and crowns you with love and compassion. He says, praise the Lord, all my soul, and said, forget not his benefits, all that he has done, all that he's doing, all that he has done that has profited us at every point. He said that he forgives us all our sins and heals up all, all our diseases. We cannot confidently say that we have stayed, let me say like 24 hours, and we have not done something, maybe committed a sin. And boy said that he forgives us all our sins. He forgives us all our sins. He heals us of all diseases. He redeems us from the pit. Let's praise this holy God. Let's thank him for having mercy upon us because indeed he has had mercy upon us. Let's unmute and thank him for healing us of all evil, from all infirmity. For, for healing us. Thank you, O God, for giving us our sins. Thank you, O God, for everything of God. Thank you, O God, for redeeming us of all and time and time again. For healing us of all evil, and Thank you, la 
Amen. So once again, we are welcome to confessing the, the scriptures, the words with um on this Wednesday. And just before we start, I just yeah. Even if there's no one can confess, I just want to make us understand something because at EIC here, we just don't do things because people do things. We do things with understanding. I just want us to, to have an understanding of the target of calling build a case. We are trying to build a case for our confession. Why? Why should we confess? Why should we speak the word of the Lord? Why should we uh, in our life? In our life. So, um, Daniel, can you all hear me? Hello. Yes, we can. Yes, yes we can. Thank you. Can hear you. Thank you. So, I'll just take a scripture from from Daniel one, and. I know we all know the story about Daniel, Daniel 1 verse 3, and I'll just start with three from verse 3, where we all know how Daniel and his friends were captured, the Israelites. And it says, then the king instructed Ashpenaz, the master of Enoch's, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles, young men in whom there were no blemish, but good looking, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge and quick to understand who had ability to serve in the king's palace and whom they might teach the language and literature of the Ch Ch Chaldeans. And the king appointed to them a daily provision of the king's delicacies and of the wine which he drank and three years of training for them so that at the end of that time they, may, they might serve before the Lord. And now I'm very sure we are all familiar with this scripture and I'm sure we are wondering how does it relate to our confession. But then I just want us to understand that in those times you could see what the king was willing to offer them just to make just to make them grow, just to, to train them to who he desired them to be. Well, you can say that in this time and age, per se, nobody is offering us food per se that we would say that they, are, they want us to go. Nobody is giving us a meal. Nobody is giving us maybe as Nigerians, maybe Amala or Semo or as a Ghanaian Banku. So what is this thing now that we can say that we can use to relate to this time and age? We have to understand that at this time and age, we are being sold a lifestyle. We are being sold a system. We are being sold a system. We are being sold words. There are things that we are being given to actually grow us into the things that the enemy wants us actually to be so i'll just make a case here before i just relate to or just continue i'll try to be as fast as possible and now we can see from just some things i was able to just on um, write down from my understanding and you could see that in those days um being being captured and everything you could understand that they being captured was not um then be selected was not because they were how like with it destitute or they were lacking or something you could see the criteria in which they were actually chosen to actually um come to the king's um come and serve the king and we have to understand that 
at this point they were being fed food and all that but now in this time and age it's our mindset things are being sold to us different kinds of lifestyle that do not even fit into what we should what a kingdom entrepreneur or what even a, a, a believer should even understand our mindset is being transformed to things that should not be at this point and in this point let's just look at what um how they actually selected this feeding exercise and some things i just wrote was that who was the person that actually like fed them why why they were actually fed what they were fed and how long they were fed now you could see that it was the king offering them food not even just anybody imagine a king in this time and age or somebody that is how like say let me just say like a president and then maybe the president is not a believer but then he's offering you a lifestyle that is not based on the kingdom it's not something that is based on your moral it's not something that the god himself would even approve but you could see that in this time and age if a president comes and gives some someone something or gives a give um maybe an entrepreneur or just somebody something it will be hard before the person can decline can say no it will be very very hard because you say a whole president is giving me something so i just want us to understand the what actually and the the intensity of what daniel and his pairs actually declined to to actually take it was like a privilege for the king to offer you something and not just even as a citizen of that country as a captive per se you are being offered giving this kind of honor and you decline so you can see that it was a king that fed them and then why they were fed why were they fed is because they were gifted and anointed i want us to understand that this lifestyle that is being sold to us these days, this day now and time and age, is because it, the, the enemy doesn't just select anybody to transform to, into what he wants. He actually looks for gifted and anointed people to, to actually transform to this mindset. And now you could see that there's a lot of things that are being um, sold out to people, even believers. You see some believers agreeing that, okay, let me say, for instance, that they are okay with... Um, with divorce before maybe let me use the for instance because before you even get married you're already having a mindset that if i enter it doesn't work out that already is already going to fracture your choosing your process of even getting somebody you may not even want to even stay to when god gives you that particular person because you know that when you enter you can just leave at any point so this system that we have now is just changing the mindset of people people are around us so you could see that it's gifted anointed people that were selected for this kind of exercise and then what they were fed they were fed the king's delicious meal and we know that in those days because these kings were idol worshippers all those meals and everything were already dedicated to idols but then daniel and his pair said that they would not if we continue reading which we will they would not actually defile themselves with the king's me they will not defile them so you can see what we're fed and you know that if they continue to eat if they had eaten what the king had given them they would be in bondage and it's the same way when you're being fed this lifestyle when you're being fed this word when you're being fed different things which maybe even translates to fear which translates to doubt you notice that people just go deeper and deeper and deeper in bondage they don't know it yet until when they can eventually compare or have someone that can tell them that this is what god says or eventually they see they can now understand how deep they have gone down into bondage another thing is how long they were actually fed you could see that this um people this um this king or these people in this kingdom they were very very good with timing that's one thing i noticed about them it took them three years they estimated that by three day three years if they feed this man with this with this lifestyle that they will be able to reach that level which they desired them to be i can, can you can remember also where they were um where daniel they said they told the king to sign a contract or sign something that if daniel can pray cannot pray for 30 days and then um, that nobody should pray for 30 days because they knew daniel would pray they had already estimated and said if daniel should stay for 30 days they had already because they were very 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 deep spiritual people but not like in the spirit spiritual of god they were they, were, they had estimated they had even weighed down and said maybe if this man can stop praying for 30 days then we can attack him or get what we want so you can see that they said in three days by three years sorry these people would have grown to who we desire them to be and then they can use them i'm sure you're all wondering how this actually um translates to confession now let's just go to um i'll start with verse eight and it said but daniel proposed in his heart that he would not 
defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord the king who has appointed your food and drink for why should we why should he see your faces looking worse than the young men who are your age then then you would endanger my head before the king so daniel said to the steward whom the chief of the eunuchs had said set over daniel hananiah michelle and azariah please test your servants for 10 days and let them give us vegetables to eat and drink and water to drink then let our appearance be examined before you and the appearance of the young men who eat, who eat the portion of the king's delicacies. And see as you fit, so deal with your servants. And so he consented. And now this is just where I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to. And you could see that Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's meal. And then Daniel requested that he would, they should be given vegetables. And this, why I'm saying this is because a lot of times when we are being sold this lifestyle in quotes morality that looks like it's moral we have to actually stay and tell ourselves that we will not we have to propose in our life and in our hearts and say that we will not we choose not to defile ourselves we choose not like if you're working let me just say for those that are maybe having entrepreneurs entrepreneurship on the on the other side and they still have their own nine to five some people can tell you what goes on in their offices. And then you still have people that even as entrepreneurs, you're made to do something, maybe to get some contracts or to get some deals. They will make you understand that you should do maybe pay some money or do some maybe fetish things. Or you could see now that Daniel proposed in his heart. And then he said that they should be fed vegetables and, um, and food. And then when I was just studying this, Holy Spirit just made me understand that because in this time and age, we do not have vegetables and fruits, that what we should feed ourselves as, as entrepreneurs is the word of God. We should feed ourselves with the word of God. And also this feeding of the word of God is also our confession. That when you keep on confessing the word of God, when you keep on speaking the word of God to yourself, that you're filling up yourself. You're actually filling up with, with other spiritual exercises, worship and prayer. This is just a place for the confession. There's a place where you confess and then you start filling up yourself. When you see those things in the world and you know, you just choose and say, no, you do not want to follow this system. You do not want to follow this system of the world. If let's use, for instance, fear, you're scared about something and you know that maybe you've had, maybe even those that have had anxiety and panic attacks. And when those things that come to your mind that keep making you to think of those things and make those panic attacks come back, when they keep coming over and over and over again, you propose in your heart and then you say that you choose not to defile yourself with these things that the enemy is bringing to you. And then you take the scripture that Jesus, that God himself has given you and you confess, you start filling up your spirit, start filling up your spirit, start filling up your spirit with those words. You start confessing. That was the same thing that Daniel did. He took the vegetables. He took those. He said he was not going to defile himself with the king's needs. And then he took the vegetables. And we all know the story that from there, you can see that they said his countenance was even better and fairer than those and even at that the scripture now says that as for these young men god gave them knowledge skill and literature and wisdom and daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams now at the end of the 10 days um at the end of 10 days the kings had said that they should be brought in the chief of the eunuchs brought them in before the nebuchadnezzar and um, for strength. And in all the matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in this room. So you could see, you can see that at this point that feeding yourself, deciding, I know this scripture basically is also a scripture of consecration. And I know a lot of us are doing a lot of fast. Some churches I'm seeing are even doing Daniel's fast and all that. But some people are just doing the Daniel's fast just with their meals. But they have not chosen in their minds to say that they will not defile, they will not defile themselves with things of, of the world. Some people are still opening up their mindsets 
Some people are still opening up their minds to things that shouldn't even be. They have not even consecrated their minds. They have not even, and even as some have said, okay, they are not going to do this. They are not even filling themselves up with the word. This is where confession comes from. Yes, there's a place where you study the word and you enjoy the word and you just pass with it and you study. It. But then there's a place where you confess the word, where it becomes a part of you, where you, you at that point, when you even meditate on it, it becomes, it becomes broken down. It seeps into the crack, into the cracks of your soul, into your heart. This is, this is where confession comes from. And you can see that the scripture says that in all matters of wisdom and understanding, that they become... 10 times better and you can see that in this world that there's a lot of junk and everything that is flying around but it's just by choice to be a, a believer or even a, a, a kingdom entrepreneur or somebody that god can correctly rightly use you know the scripture that says that you should um, renew your mind renew your mind renew your mind you should renew your mind yes as i said there's a place for studying the word but there's a place for continuous confession confession until you can see yourself in that particular place as uh, mr damala will say until you can draw that word from your spirit out from your spirit like a sword and you can use it at every point even when the enemy just brings up any thoughts or anything with regards to that thing which has been giving you issues or whatever you just draw it out and immediately before you know it everything just disseminates and we have to understand that yes there's a place for where you have um where you know we pray and where you have this when there's maybe there's a spirit that has been attached to someone let me just say spirit of anxiety spirit of um, worry and all that and then there's a place where these spirits are cast out yes we thank god for eic and how eic you come on eic and by god's grace you're able to discern and know the particular spirit and who remembers that exercise when mr damala says that we can get be able to ask the lord to discern what that spirit is or put that spirit seal it and then ask that you um the 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 spirit of the lord per se should rest upon that person to fill up that vacuum but another thing which christians we don't do we don't do intentionally is to fill up that vacuum that vacuum that has been created as i say again that is where confession comes in confession helps you to fill up that vacuum you remember the scripture that says that when a uh, when a spirit is cast out that he leaves the body he leaves the body and he roams around the desert and then he comes back. And when he comes back, he sees that the place that he has been cast out of is neatly swept and arranged. And then he goes and he calls back seven more spirits, much stronger. And I just started thinking, I was like, first of all, how is he even allowed to even come in freely into where he has been cast out? And second of all, why is it that if he had access before, why couldn't he bring in those seven spirits before? Why couldn't he bring in those seven spirits before? Why is it now where the place has been swept and cleaned? He will now bring in seven more spirits, more wicked. And the Holy Spirit just opened this scripture to me. And he said that now unto him, unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we ask or do. More than we ask or do. More than we ask or think according to the power. And he said that at that point where that spirit is cast away, where that spirit is cast out, that that vacuum that is, 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 is left there. Because Jesus, you can't compare the spirit of the Lord with that um, portion, with that vacuum which that enemy had taken. Then Jesus now expands your spirit, expands your mind so wide so that you can receive him fully, so that you can receive him in his capacity. So that you can receive that which he wants to do for you by at that time by casting away that spirit but then some of us we do not fill up that vacuum and then that spirit goes and it comes back and it brings in seven more wicked spirits you understand that scripture that jesus said that i have a lot to tell you but you cannot bear how will he say he has a lot to tell you but you cannot bear how is it that you cannot bear words and we have to understand that bearing means that he has a lot of of, of things to tell you that Jesus transfers spirits. Said that the words that I speak, that they are um, that they are spirits and they are life and they are spirits. That when Jesus speaks to you, when you confess these scriptures, the spirit of that scripture, the spirit that is laden in that scripture, is impacted on you. That is why your spirit is expanded at that point. So when you keep confessing, you have enough space, you have enough capacity 
to actually take in the spirit. And then by your confession, you become stronger. He said, several more spirits, wicked, more wicked than said, more wicked or more stronger, whichever one. You have enough strength, actually, to take on whatever comes your way after that exercise. But then, as Christians, we do not confess. We just leave the vacuum. And then all things happen and we just wonder why maybe our prayers are not answered or we are just stunted in growth. I'm just trying to build a case for our confession. Why we should confess the word of the Lord. Why we should confess that word of the Lord. That is not enough for you to just yes pray and we know how we pray and we cast out spirits and all that and we know that we are free we get confirmations through prophecy through dreams through visions that we are free but then you need to start building your spirit you need to start building your spirit so that you are 10 times better than you were before you are 10 times better than your peers in the world so i just hope i've been able to just make us understand one um, the reason why we should confess the word why we should confess the word to, to, to ourselves, to build ourselves up, to build ourselves. The scripture says that daily he loads us with benefit. What do you think that benefit is? Did you walk on the road and food fell from the sky? No, that benefit is to build your spirit. That is why Jesus said that, I, I, that my meat, my bread is to do the work, the work of the Lord who sent me. That is what Jesus said, that my meat is to do the work of the Lord who sent me. And then he also said, a man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded by, from, the word of the, from the mouth of the Lord. It's all about building your spirit. And confession is one of those ways. So I want us to, as we go into 2023, understand the place for confession in our lives. Yes, we pray. Yes, we worship. But we must confess the word. We must confess the word. We must speak it. We must speak it until it becomes a part of us. Until in the spirit, because largely this is Daniel. It happened probably in the, in the physical then, but now it's more in the spiritual that is happening. And this spirit, they see our form in the spirit. They see our form in the spirit. So they know when this word is already a part of us. And I'll just end this with a testimony before... Um, I take, I'm just going to take one prayer point so that the next person can continue. And I remember when um, my eldest brother had a, um, a kidney transplant. And at that point, it was like a spiritual battle, a warfare and all that. And I was just praying and praying. And I just knew that this, when I saw what I was up against, I knew that it's, it's in short, it's only Jesus that could fight this battle. And then I just soaked up on a lot of scriptures about Jesus, how he was mighty, how he was, how he is, sorry, mighty, how he is Jehovah El Gibor, how strong he is, how mighty, because I depended on him fully to fight that battle for me. And I remember one night I had a dream. And that, in that dream, I was walking and some people, some ladies, some people attacked me. And as they were attacking me, I, anything they threw at me, I would just throw, be able to throw it away. But then at one point, there was a point where three ladies, which I'm very sure were witches, and in quote strong, they came and they attacked me. Maybe they had thrown so much at me and it didn't work. And then they came themselves. And I looked at it and in the dream, I just shouted, Jesus. The way I shouted Jesus, I woke up vibrating. And immediately I sh shouted Jesus. The way they scattered, the way they tossed, apart that was because that word i had confessed that word that was already a part of me that even in the spirit even in the spirit it was able to fight it was able to like it was a, already a part of me so i just want us to understand the place for confession and just one scripture i would want us to just um confess before i hand i'll hand over to madame now nah, i'm sorry i'm not even checking the time but i hope i'm still in the right um place is but Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies. And I want us to confess and put ourselves in Daniel's place and tell us that Akudo has proposed in her heart that she will not defile herself. If you know there's a problem, maybe there is anxiety, there is sadness, there is um, um, whatever it is that you're battling with. Just unmute and tell yourself, confess it to yourself, propose as you are saying it, also agree in your heart. He said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, O Lord. So just unmute and she can 
call yourself say and mercy for her in her heart that she will not defile herself man is a woman a and a lot of us have received prophecy from january 1 till now and this is what the holy spirit just told me and said you have to keep confessing those those prophecies you can get the adjoining scriptures and keep confessing it those those prophecies must come to pass in ezekiel god said i have said it and i will perform it you are not to perform it just keep confessing thank you very much madam now you can take over amen amen god bless you auntie that was powerful thank you so much okay so we are confessing um, the scriptures, the promises, um, just from just what we have heard. Um, we are looking at total reliance upon God in all that we do. Um, total reliance as to confessing the scriptures. We are relying on the word of God to, to in any way for victory, to fight our battles. It is the word of God. So when we confess the word it's from our hearts, it works. So today I want us to look at Proverbs 21, 31. He says, well, the horse is made ready for the day of battle, but victory rests with the Lord. That is looking at total reliance. Okay, so we will confess there's that word in, in Proverbs that says the horse is made ready for the day of battle, but victory rests with the Lord. And then in Psalm 127, 1 to 3, it says, Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches yeah. over the city, the guard stands watch in vain. So if we do not confess the word of God, like Auntie said, and we don't rely totally on God, and then we, we are looking at... Um, maybe our promises or a breakthrough or something good to happen or for us to be able to battle out the enemy it, it cannot happen for us that way unless we confess like as auntie said unless we totally rely on god so at this moment i want us to repeat or let's say confess the scripture that says what unless the lord builds the house the builders labor in vain unless the, the unless the lord watches over the city the god stands watch in vain in the mighty name of jesus so we have Amen. we are praying we are standing we are rising Sapranda, <laughs> <laughs> 
Amen. Amen. Okay, secondly, I want us to confess Isaiah 60, verse 1. He says, Rise, shine. For your light has come and the glory of the yeah. Lord rises over you. Deuteronomy yeah. 15, 6 says what? For the Lord your God will bless you as he has promised. I want us to look at Isaiah 61. It says, Rise and shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. I want us to yeah. confess as a family that we are saying, The Father, let your glory shine upon the EIC family and that of our immediate family that is it is telling us to obey the word in the name of jesus as we obey the word of god we would rise and shine we would be blessed if whatever we are confessing it shall come to pass in our life so i want us to say lord Father, let your glory be seen in us. Let your glory shine upon the EIC family and that of our immediate family in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
the bible says in joshua 1 verse 8 it says keep this book of the lord always on your lips meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it in 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 the eic tribe we are empowered to obey the word of god just like we are empowered to to for today to today for us to confess the word of god it says that yeah. we, it, we are to keep the book of the lord always on our lips to meditate yeah. on it nice so that we may be careful to do everything that is written in it when we confess the word we we should be careful when we confess the word or we read or meditate on the word we are able to do what is expected of us we are able to forge higher we are able to keep ourselves when it is it is time for us to keep ourselves we are able to stand on the word because we are believing in god and we are trusting in him we are relying in him so when the world is calling us to do things that does not pertain to the will of God, we are able to stand because the word is in us. And we are able to say no because the word is in us. We are able to say yes because the word is in us. And not just by mere things around us or just not following the things of the world so this moment i want us to come i want us to confess or meditate or say um let's let's confess joshua 1 8 it says well we should keep the book of the law always on our lips we should meditate day and night so that we may be careful to do as it is written we may be careful to do as we are being called to do that we may be able to do in the name of jesus christ let us confess this from our hearts in the mighty name of jesus christ Thank you. 
Amen. We are confessing. We are saying as the AIC tribe, as 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 a team, as a family. As the year has begun, we are saying we will succeed and not fail because Christ dwells richly in us. It does is from Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. It says, We have been crucified with Christ, and we no longer live, but Christ liveth in us. The life that yeah. we live that is, is, is it lives in the body, and we live by faith in the Son of God who who loved us and gave himself for us. This is what the word of God is saying in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. He says, it is not us that live it. It is not us that become successful. It is through Christ that we, we are successful. All that we yeah. have, all that happens to us, it is through Christ. So today we are confessing by the power of God that we are the EIC tribe. We are successful yeah. in Jesus' name and we will not Amen. fail by the power of God in the name of Jesus. I want us to confess it as we sit through, as we dwell in, in, in Christ richly. We are saying yeah. that we will not fail. We will succeed in all that yeah. we do in our divorce, even in, in the studying of the word, our spiritual battles, we will be successful. We will be victorious. What we seek for, yes. we will get through Christ in Jesus' name. Yeah. Confess <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Amen. 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 God bless us all. Lastly, I just want to encourage each and everyone here. So I'm looking at it from First Peter, First Chapter Four, Verse Ten. He says, "Each of you should use whatever gifts you have received to serve others as faithful steward of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very word of God. If anyone serves, yeah. they should do so." with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be yeah. the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. The scripture tells us that we must see whatever we have as a gift from God. After all, we have nothing which God has not given to us. We should see whatever we have have been given as an opportunity to serve each other as Christians. Every good thing we have is from is from God, and it is through His grace, and He intended to use it for His purpose. I want us to be encouraged through this word to do what is expected of us as Christians, yeah. as brothers in, in the kingdom, in the, in the mighty name yeah. of Jesus. I just want us to yeah. say just prayer with the scripture. He says, Lord, God, we, I want us to say this, may God, may each talent in our family, as this family, any talent within us, should it should glorify you in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Is it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want us to pray with this scripture that whatever we have is for the God and that we should be able to share it with each other. Yes, <laughs> Thank you. 
Amen. 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 I love the travail on this altar. I love the travail. I can sense the travail. And there are anointings turning on even as we pray. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. I want us to take two prayer points. Um, I believe you are done, my sister, now. I know you mentioned the last, that was your yes. last yes. prayer point. Yeah, yes. bless you, my dear. Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. Isaiah 60 is a chapter in the Bible that every single person should religiously confess as scriptures. The entire chapter is loaded. I want us, as we go into this year, to dedicate and consecrate a day in the year, or in a week rather, a particular day whereby we can confess the promises of God in scriptures. But I'll take just one confession from Isaiah 60. Thank you for that powerful charge, Akudo. I'm so proud of you. All right, in Isaiah 60, verse 11, the scripture says, My gates are continually open for blessings. I'll say it again. My gates are open continually for blessings. Isaiah 60, verse 11. My gates are open continually for blessings. You see, back in the days when this scripture was written, Israel used to have a gate. I've been to Jerusalem. And when you go to the old city, you will see the gate that surrounded the entire city. What would happen at a particular time every evening, those gates would be shut down. And then nobody can enter, nobody can come out. Then the next morning, those gates will be open again. It is possible that that can be your life as a Christian. When your gates are closed, it can be good, but it can also be bad. This scripture says, my gates are continually open for blessings. You can say they are open for business because we are all entrepreneurs in this place. But the scriptural context is that it is open for blessings. A few years ago, when I was a young single man, I had a very close friend, a lady that was a good friend of mine. Very beautiful. One day she was telling me a story one of our um, colleagues in school, I really liked her, wanted to talk to her. And so he drew near to her at a get together, took his food and his cup and everything. And um, before he could say ABC, she said, I know what you're about to say. Please just don't even bother. Just keep your mouth shut. I'm not interested. And then she walked away. That young man married one of her best friends. And now that girl is still single as we speak. This is 14 years ago. As we speak, she is still single. Can somebody unmute on this call and say, my gates are open continually for blessings. My gates are 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 my gates
my gates are continually open. My gates are continually open for God's blessings to come my way. Let's begin to confess that scripture and say my gates are continually open for business or for blessings. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray and confess that scripture. Amen. 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 Psalm 37, verse 25. I will never be forsaken. My seed will never beg for bread. David said, I have been young, now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. To be forsaken is a big deal. It means you don't have a God that can respond to you in your time of need. You know, it's funny that this year we're talking about grace for supernatural works. When you have a God that can respond to you, he responds by means of grace. He releases a grace that you can access and walk in. And guess what? The direct opposite of grace is disgrace. It is disgrace. This scripture says that I will not be forsaken. And my seed, if you don't have children, your seed is your business. My seed will never beg for bread. We're going to take that confession and declare it. As David said it, I have been young, now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. My seed will not beg for bread. I will not be forsaken. I will not be disgraced. I am in grace for supernatural works. Begin to confess it. Begin to confess it. Guys, I know we are out of time, but um, I will take two more quick prayer points. Haggai 2 verse number 9. My latter end shall be greater than the former. My latter end, my latter, it shall be greater than the former. 
Let me tell you what that scripture means. It means that this year will be greater than last year for you. You must find a place to confess this yeah. promise. What God says concerning you that this year, 2023, shall be greater than last year as it pertains business, as it pertains family, as it pertains finances, relationships. Let's begin to confess that scripture. My latter year shall be greater than the former year. Let's begin to pray. Amen, amen, amen. Akudo, I see that your hand, I see your hand is raised. We will take one. Yes, I just have one point on Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, it's just with regards to um Tanzania launch. I don't know if I should go ahead right now. Yes, I was just going to say that actually. Go the ahead. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, go ahead. So, um, Job 23, 14. For he yeah. performs what is appointed for me, and many yeah. such things are with him. The confession here is, for he performs what he has appointed for Mr. Damola, and many such things are, are with him. That means that Whatever it is that he has appointed, Mr. Damola, with regard to this mm. Tanzania launch, whatever it is that is needed, that is needed for this launch, however, wherever, whenever, that the Lord himself has already performed it. As he has appointed Mr. Amen. Damola, so he has already performed it. And he said that many such, said that, and many such things are with him. That means after this launch, many such, much more launches are already set to be in the hands of Amen. the Lord. Amen. So that is our confession. Amen. That is our yeah. confession and our prayer with regards to this launch. Yeah. That he performs what is appointed for Mr. Damola. Just that Amen. is the confession. Mm. God understands. Don't worry. Just confess, just pray. La zikere mono saki Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you, sir. Please keep that prayer point in mind for this week. We're going to be in Tanzania um, this weekend to have a lunch on Sunday. So please keep that prayer point in mind that everything will go smoothly well and that God will go ahead of us and make it a blissful, blessed day. We'll take one more confession. We'll take one more confession. And then we'll call it a day. We'll call it a day. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 11 verse 21, please, if there is noise on your end, you can mute your end. The anointing of God is beginning to flow on this altar. It's very strong. A very strong anointing is on this altar. My days will be like heaven on earth. This is what Deuteronomy 11 verse 21 says. My days. My days. My days will be like heaven. It will be like heaven on earth. I've had a chance to understand a glimpse of that statement. One day after praying, fell into a trance, and an angel was sent to take me to meet the King of Glory. And as we began to move further and further in that journey, and the gate was swinging open by its own accord, I felt the most intense, the deepest form of love ever known to man. This love I talk about, you cannot act it. Nobody can write a novel about it. There are depths of love, my friends, beyond the love that a man can have for a woman and beyond the love a father can have for a child. So when the Bible says my days are like heaven on earth, what it is in fact saying is that God will make that our experience here on earth. In that place, oh, love is the atmosphere. I got to understand later on that the atmosphere, as we breathe oxygen, what they breathe in that place is the love of God. It's the deepest kind of love known to humans. They're going to confess that scripture that my days my days throughout 2023, there will be like heaven on earth. This one is when somebody says, oh, it's like I'm in heaven, and you're saying it metaphorically. No, it can be an experience whereby you are on earth, but you are experiencing the atmosphere of heaven perpetually. That will be the last prayer point we take. We're going to confess that scripture in Deuteronomy 11 verse 21. And I want you to confess it throughout the rest of this week. That my days will be like heaven upon the face of the earth. Let's begin to confess it. Lampra do ketembra di shapra sata. Alisa pandoro no ye shapan. Namalosi hanyala. Nalige do suku a kanyi be kusha. Inali kumano de kebara badu. De kiki chasa. 
Folks, in response to our prayers, God has released an angel. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I'm going to release his ministry. I'm seeking it, crowning three people on this altar. A season has come for you. Where God is turning ashes to beauty. Oh, dear. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You will feel the physical impression of a crown resting on your head. Shifting on your head. It is that angel. I release his ministry. Father, I ask, oh God, that those that you are crowning upon this year to shift from a season of ashes, to move them to a season of beauty, let that crown rest on their head. Let it rest. Let it rest. Let it rest. Let it rest upon their head. To shame the devil of all his wiles and tricks and ploys. I see a scepter, a scepter of authority being given to a person. You've waited and travailed on the altar. December was the month of travail for you, says the Spirit of God. And behold, I come with a reward. I come to reward you with a scepter of authority in God's kingdom. And as I speak, that scepter is resting on you. It's a scepter, a scepter of authority. You will speak and things will hear you. They will hear your voice. It will mm. echo in the heavens. Whatever you bind upon the face of the earth will be bound in heaven. Mm. Because God gives you a scepter of authority to administer things in your family and break bars and break chains and bring people out of captivity. My God. Mm. I see a person on here. God says he has promoted you. And I see a witch bowing to you, bowing in authority to you because you have come as the person, as the gatekeeper in the family. And now you have risen in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That your authority now supersedes that mere tiny witches. Yeah. And when they come, they prostrate before you because of the authority you carry, a signet of authority. My goodness, a ring is being placed on your finger as I speak. If you are that person, if you are implicated by this statement, a ring, you will feel a ring being fitted in your hand. It's a ring from the King of Kings, a symbol of authority, a signet. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Thank you 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 for your faith. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my God. I see you in the Spirit's wisdom. I see you. 
And the Spirit of God says, a season of promotion has now come. For you have been faithful, and in exchange, I will give back to you my faithfulness. And I will show forth your faith amongst the nations of the world. And men will come to the light, the light that you carry, to the brightness of your light. Oh, see angels of intimacy flowing as you sing. Do not be afraid, says the God. Do not be afraid. I am am going before you into every place you are going. Now I see families being united. There's a rope that's tying you together now. Families, I don't know who you are. Your family is going somewhere. The Spirit of God is releasing a cord that binds together a cord in the Spirit. He's releasing a cord that binds together with love to make you strong. There will be understanding and agreement within your family, says the Spirit of God. This is a good year. It's going to be a good year. And Father, we receive your faithfulness and your goodness. Amen. Thank you for what you're doing, Father. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness. And there are those who have experienced a drought in business last year. And the Spirit of God says, this year will be good. This year will be good. That is what Amen. he's saying. This year will be good. It will be good. Good to his own standard. Amen. 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 This that is the word of God to do. For behold, I make all things new. I make all things new. And the old shall pass away. And new things are coming upon you. New things. New things. New things. Ministry of new things. Ministry of new things. Oh, I see an angel clothing someone. And wrap it through in a garment, my God. And it says everything that you've been through in the last few months was before for a reason. And in this season, I delight to to comfort you. Somebody else, a climbing ladder. You're climbing ladders. You're climbing ladders. You're climbing ladders. I see you moving up in the spirit. You are climbing ladders. And the spirit of God is with you. Is with you. Is with you. Thank you, Father, for one such prayer. Give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. It is well with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank God. We hope you have been tremendously blessed by this message. You can help us spread the message of Marketplace Ministry by sending the link to this message and sharing it with just one friend or family member. As a tribe of Marketplace Ministers, our goal is to focus on building kingdom entrepreneurs with kingdom truths that can transform their lives and destinies. Finally, we don't collect offerings at Entrepreneurs in Christ. But if you would like to sow a seed into this project, you can do so via World Remit or PayPal. Or you can request our account details in specific countries. Thank you again. And God bless your every move. Remember to like, subscribe and share this video with a friend. God bless you. Bye.